welcome back to Cummins Repower Garage. I'm Brittany Barella here again with Steve Sanders. And today we're going to talk you through the initial startup of your R2.8 crate engine once you've got it installed in your vehicle. So the first resource you're going to definitely want to use is your quick startup guide, which is provided in the information packet that gets sent to you with your crate engine. Um, in here are all the instructions that you're going to need for that very first startup, so including uh, fluid fill, idle instructions, everything you need. So if you read nothing else, please read this quick start guide. Make sure you understand everything in there. First thing to note is that your engine does not come with any fluids in it. It's hot tested at the factory and then drained for shipping. So you're going to need to add back in coolant and oil before you start it up. For coolant, we recommend a uh, fleet guard complete. Uh, make sure you're using your Cummins recommended coolant. Um, and make sure you're following your uh, fill and bleed instructions either found at quickserve.cummins.com or in your installation manual. You definitely want to make sure all of that air is out of your cooling system before you go to start your engine up. Once you've got your coolant filled, you'll move on to oil. We recommend using Valvoline Premium Blue Oil. 15W40 is the weight that we recommend for kind of your average temperature. Uh, if you go any, in, if you're in colder temperatures, you're going to want to change that oil weight. But Valve, Valvoline Premium Blue is your Cummins recommended oil. For your oil filters, each filter comes with some instructions about pre-filling with oil and then lubricating that seal on the top. Uh, so make sure you go ahead and, and fill those up before you install them to prime the oil system. For your fuel system, we also have those same instructions on our fuel filter. However, uh, typically this fuel filter is used in a system that has a secondary filter. Uh, and so when you fill this up with your fuel, um, it has a second filter that can catch any debris that gets added into the system. Since our system does not have the second filter and this is your primary fuel filter, uh, you don't want to go ahead and, and pre-fill this. Uh, you just will add that in dry, but do lubricate that seal before you install it on your filter head. Since you're not pre-filling this, you do want to prime the fuel system using this hand pump. Um, so you can unscrew this, prime the fuel system, and then screw it back in. A couple other things to note about fuel. So all of our testing has been done with ultra low sulfur diesel. Um, so we recommend that you do use that if it's available. Uh, we do have some kits for upfitting for high sulfur diesel, so talk to your local Cummins distributor if that's something you're interested in and you're in an area that you cannot get the ultra low sulfur. Um, if you're in a cold climate, uh, look into getting a winter blend fuel. Number two diesel is good down to about 32F, and if you go any colder than that, you'll want to make sure you're using a blend of number one and number two. And if you get uh, really cold, uh, you know, well below zero, look into getting number one diesel fuel um, straight. Uh, the last thing about fuel is we have tested all of our engines to B20, so if you're looking at using biodiesel blends, uh, keep it be below B20. We don't recommend going in, uh, into any higher concentration of that biodiesel. Uh, last fluid to note is your power steering, so make sure you're filling up your power steering reservoir uh, and properly purging that system of any air as well. Uh, last thing is sensors. So once you've got all your fluids taken care of, you'll just want to double check that you've plugged in all of the sensors uh, that come separate in the kit that need to get attached to your engine uh, wiring harness. Uh, so that'll be your MAF sensor, mass airflow on your intake as well as the water and fuel sensor on the bottom of your fuel filter. Once you've got that all taken care of, you'll double check on the mechanical side, and so Steve will walk you through that on the Jeep. Yeah, once you've gotten to that point where you're reading through the quick startup guide and you're ready to turn the key, you've done a lot of work to your vehicle. You've had the old engine out, you've probably had the old transmission out, transfer case, drive shafts, you've probably cut off motor mounts, you've added a lot of aftermarket parts, uh, so you have a lot of nuts and bolts that you really just want to spend some time, as excited as you may be, go over and stop, think about what you've done, haven't done, do a visual inspection of all those mechanical points. Um, another thing to note about uh, filling the oil system for the first time, if the engine installation has taken a long time, uh, you know, your oil system could be dry. If you've had the remote oil filter housing off or those lines disconnected, uh, you know, you want to make sure you get oil through this engine before you start it. Uh, easy way to do that is since you are using your own starting circuit, our ECM uh, doesn't have to have anything to do with this. So you can pull that little um, fuse on our key switch signal and your ignition switch, and that will disable the ECM. 
but your ignition switch should still crank the engine. That'll give you a nice uh, oil lubrication priming uh, of the oil system and all the oil rifles. Uh, other things you want to note, uh, check for charge air boots. Make sure that those are all tight. Uh, obviously, uh, all your coolant um, lines, especially those custom ones or ones that you've put together with the coupler, are using rolled beads. Um, uh, you don't want to have a coolant mess in your garage or all over your nice new engine uh, and components. So kind of once you've done that last uh, check, you've checked all those sensors and you think you're ready to go, then it's time to move it into the inside of the cab and do our first key on. All right, so now you're in neutral, parking brake is set, you're ready to key on to the run position, not crank the engine over. So you can see our indicator lights here all light up to show the ECM's online, that lamp driver is wired correctly, uh, and this last remaining light stays on. Uh, we have this malfunction indicator lamp wired. Uh, we're not using it in the calibration to communicate anything to you, so if you have it wired, it will stay on if you're keyed on, but your engine is not running. Once your engine's running, that goes away. So really, if uh, you want to reduce the amount of lights you're wiring, you don't uh, have to wire that one initially. We don't have any active faults on our Murphy gauge, uh, so our indicator light for our warning uh, is not illuminated in either position. Uh, we don't have a stop engine light. If you have either of those present, you really want to take that SPN code go to QuickServe, figure out what it is, make sure it's not something that could damage your engine if you try to proceed with a startup. The other light to pay attention to, and the Murphy gauge will not communicate this, is a wait to start lamp. So if you're in the middle of uh, your winter break trying to get this install done, your shop doesn't have heat and it's cold, that wait to start lamp will come on. You will be cycling a grid heater uh, and you'll wanna wait for that lamp to turn off before you actually try to start your engine. So now we have no active faults, uh, nothing to worry about here. All our sensors are hooked up, so we don't have a water and fuel fault. We haven't tried to crank it yet. Um, sometimes when you crank it and you start it, you'll get a low pressure fault on the fuel rail, uh, which will go away uh, with time. It just means that there was some air uh, in that fuel system because of that initial startup. So we shouldn't have any of those here, but I'll go ahead and start it. All right, now that our engine is up and running, I can verify that I've got engine speed. I'm at the correct idle range for a cold engine. My coolant temp is obviously normal. I can verify that my system voltage is uh, charging. So it was at 12.6 volts before startup. Now it's 14.1 volts, so my alternator is charging. And then the other things you wanna do are, are really uh, listen and look for any um, uh, sights, sounds, uh, smells all those new things. You've, you've had this thing apart for a while. You wanna make sure you didn't forget anything. I've got Brittany under the hood. She's doing a visual inspection to make sure there are no fluid leaks anywhere um, or she can't hear any uh, boot leaks or anything like that, uh, boost going through the charge air boots. Um, she's doing a white paper test. This is a high pressure fuel system on this uh, uh, turbo diesel. You don't wanna do that leak test with your hand because if there is a leak, it's gonna impregnate your hand with diesel and that's bad news. So she took a white piece of paper, she can kind of go around the high pressure uh, fuel rail, the high pressure injector lines, the high pressure fuel pump, and make sure there's no fuel vapor showing up on that. If there is, shut the engine off, figure out what's going on, but keep your hands out of there. Any of this under hood stuff you're doing, especially for your first startup, safety glasses, gloves, you're dealing with a lot of moving parts, a mechanical fan, uh, that's already moving or an electric fan that could kick on any time. So be smart about it. Uh, use common sense here. Once you've verified that you don't have any of those issues, you don't have any leaks or anything, you want your engine to warm up for about three to five minutes. You want that thermostat to open. Uh, it's a diesel that can take a while because they do run cool. So go ahead and start to do some RPM sweeps. Don't mash the pedal down a bunch. Just nice gradual sweeps. You know, Get that uh, coolant flowing a little more, get that oil pressure uh, up there. And you know, if, you, if you're doing your power steering for the first time, take that cap off, go lock to lock, purge all the air out of the bubbles like, or out of the reservoir like Brittany was talking about. So now we're good. We know this engine's broken in. We know we don't have any leaks. But if it were the first time, what you'd wanna do is key off and you wanna still check for leaks. When you key off, your coolant system can build up pressure. And if you've not seated uh, one of your hoses correctly or you didn't do uh, a connection with a rolled bead fitting or anything like that, 
that's when that problem can really show itself. You don't want to blow a radiator hose off, you know, three minutes after you've walked away from your vehicle and you're high-fiving your friends that you got your installation done, only to come back out in the garage and show them this massive coolant mess and, and uh, steaminess. Trust me, you don't want to do that. Um, so now that we're all done here, let's go back out. So that's a wrap for our startup instructions for your R2.8. Congratulations on getting it fully installed and running. It's a big feat and worth celebrating. So like I said at the beginning, if you haven't done so already, look at your quick startup guide that you get in your information packet. Look at quickserve.cummins.com if there's anything in included in here that you're unfamiliar with or unsure of. And visit cumminsrepower.com if you're ready to purchase your crate engine. We hope you guys liked our installation guide overview here at Cummins Repower Garage. Stay tuned for future episodes where we bring in more Cummins Repowered vehicles, both from our own fleet and our customer fleet. Uh, go to CumminsRepower.com if you want to submit your own builder profile and feature your vehicle here at Cummins Repower Garage. See you next time. Thanks.